You're watching the Star TV Network. And then in December 2017, Disney announced Early the biggest morning. deal in history. Their massive takeover of most of 21st Century Fox. Up until then, the television businesses in Asia were much like the rest of the world, slightly reduced and with limited brand recognition outside of kids' channels. It was Disney who started the TV business in Taiwan in late March 1995, the localized version of Disney Channel, and later to control of ESPN Association with Star Sports 5050. The Disney Channel later started a Southeast Asian feed, broadcasting from Singapore in 1996. Though they thought Singapore itself was too small a market, and didn't launch on Singapore Cablevision until at least 2000. It's also worth noting that at the time, Disney's perception of Asia was that the region was as widespread as Star's perception. They had the whole continent in their favour, including Arabia, which technically extends into Northern Africa. Under the Singaporean control, they created an Arabian feed. This arrangement stopped in 2003 when Disney handed control of the Arabian feed to a new EMEA region and it became a bilingual channel just to cut costs. Life went on for Disney in Asia, a new channel to arrive at the pace. First in Japan with Disney Channel, Playhouse Disney and later Toon Disney in 2003. Disney Channel and Toon Disney in 2004 and Disney Channel's sister channel in the Southeast Asian market turned out to be Playhouse Disney, launching alone in Southeast Asia that year. Disney was already switching gears from a family entertainment company to a mixed one, changing the public perception that they had held for years, largely due to the success of the Eisner plans to kick off the Renaissance with The Little Mermaid and all that jazz. Now the strategy was to be everywhere and own everything, Kind of like by and large from Wally. Their current era of conquest probably started in 1996 when they bought Capital Cities Communications, owners of the ABC television network and the ESPN in the United States. And then there were the non US and non Australian assets of Fox Kids, as well as the Saban catalog, of the Fox family, which they divested in 2011. Although Fox Kids did have an impact, as it created a peripheral channel following the sale, Jetix. It lasted a few years, struggled to find an identity, and ultimately became Disney XD nearly everywhere. The quest for world domination cranked into high gear in the early 2010s, when Disney acquired Lucasfilm and Marvel, and managed to increase Disney's already gargantuan catalogue to astronomical levels, captured the loyalty of trillions of geeks worldwide, and generated the ambitious Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, and if it matters enough to you, they also bought Maker Studios, who at one stage owned Blip TV. Maker Studios had some gaming YouTubers, and that was the reason why they had gaming programming for a while in Disney XD USA and Asia. This is a general audience program. So back to 2017 and the Fox deal. What was the big deal this time? Apparently, Disney CEO, a modern-day Alexander the Great, Bob Iger, wanted these assets in order to build a new gigantic streaming service, which is what we now call Disney+. Plus. These assets included, in the deal, were the entirety of the 20th Century Fox studio, from which they eventually took the Fox away from the name, Fox-related cable networks FX and FXX, 73% of the National Geographic Society, that also included the channels under its name, 30% of Hulu, Star India, and the non-USA Fox Networks Group. Murdoch's remaining assets became the new Fox Corporation, and consisted, remember that he lost Sky around the same time to Comcast, of Fox and My Network TV, the O and O's for their respective networks, the controversial news and business channels, and four sports channels, three in English and one in Spanish. Disney agreed to phase out the Fox brand from the Fox branded assets they now controlled. They didn't want to be associated with Murdoch anymore anyway. 
There was a conflict with Sky's new owners, Comcast, with the assets, but after some time, as well as regulatory hurdles from like a million jurisdictions worldwide, the fight was sealed and the deal was approved, and on the 20th of March 2019, a new, mighty, gigantic entertainment conglomerate was formed, without even changing the name. Quite a promising start, really. But behind the scenes, Disney was testing the waters of a new plan, shutting down loss-making television channels in favour of Disney+. Plus. They already started it in the summer of 2018, merging the schedules of all European feeds of Disney Junior and Disney XD for efficiency. But then again, Disney XD was suffering worldwide. After the station's initial premise of being Disney Channel for Boys died on its arse, Disney tried almost literally every other possible strategy to keep the channel afloat. In the USA, the channel's already starting to suffer, with Disney shifting its remaining originals to the main Disney channel, which by then, outside of Europe, left its tween girl phase and returned to the mixed demographic, mixed gender network it had been in its past. Even by late 2018, Disney XD's days were numbered in parts of the world, as the feeds in India and Australia were on the verge of collapse. And then went over the verge. India's one was ostensibly to be replaced by an old Marvel channel, which turned out to be a lie, because before long, all the Disney XD programming it used to have started to reappear, with all those dubbed Pokemon reruns. The one in Australia was simply shut down. And then, this disease spread to other Disney stations, even some versions of the main one. Disney Channel, which was hit by the shutdown spray in New Zealand in December of 2019, and Australia on Fox at the start of the new year, for the end of February by Fetch. More versions of DXD shut down around the world, particularly in the EMEA region, followed by Disney Channel Italy, and then, to the astonishment of the entire industry, and abysmal ratings, Disney Channel UK bit the big one. Maybe it wasn't much of a shock. Many of the surviving European feeds were visibly flailing, sucking the old We're a network for girls aesthetic, garnished with a dire EU content quota that saw the stations lag behind other markets, like Latin America and Asia, despite the endorsement of the mouse. Then we get to Asia, where Disney, with Star's channels, found its place in society. They had already made Disney Channel strictly kid oriented with far more cartoons and live-action shows, and the high emphasis on Malay animated series like Oopin and Nippin. Inevitably, Disney XC was the first to go from the Asian market at the end of 2020, and during its last couple of years, it was struggling for content, to the extent that they even resorted to airing Disney Junior programming. It did help that it was on Astro's basic package and was available to anyone with it, and it did improve its ratings more than the main channel did. However, 2020 saw providers cutting their contracts with Disney for no apparent reason whatsoever. On June 1st, 2020, Singtel and StarHub subscribers awoke to see that the Disney-branded kids' channels, who had dedicated Singaporean feeds, were gone. Disney said they didn't renew their contract on time. It was nothing but a mere excuse to set Disney Plus up in the country, even without the hot star name attached to it. Then these channels were dropped from Asher in Malaysia, for the same reason in the middle of December, justifying the expense on Boomerang and Nick Jr., dirt cheap channels. And then we get to March of this year, with StarHub dropping the remaining Fox branded channels because get Disney Plus or die. Backtrack again to December 2020 when Disney's Investors Day attracted millions of people to see what kinds of shows were on the production for Iger's precious streaming service. I say Iger, but he was actually retiring, will be very gradually, and handing over the reins to Bob Chapek, who has since become King Triton from the first Little Mermaid movie. I consider myself a reasonable merman. I set certain rules, and I expect those rules to be obeyed. I say Chapek, it looks more like Hapek or something. Don't know if he is of Polish ancestry. Without revealing massive details, the international Hulu was revealed with a familiar-ish logo, 
the well-anticipated star. Many people by then associated the star branding, and the logo in particular, with South Asian networks like Star Plus and Star Gold, leading to many misconceptions about star being all about the Hindi Sars Bahus. The exact same effect was triggered in September 2020's launch of Disney Plus Hotstar Indonesia, for exactly the same purpose, as opposed to star's long-lasting impact in the Southeast Asian television market. And it did take long before they planned to use it for television, using Latin America as the guinea pigs for a promising rebrand, as the new name of entertainment. Also, they thought. Star Channel, el nuevo nombre del entretenimiento. As retribution, the European Star India channels, Star Plus, Star Gold, and Star Parrot, will have to rename themselves to Utsav after the Hindi for celebration, an homage to a channel Star India had up until a few years ago. It was also available in the UK, but was neither here nor there and later shut down too. Fortunately, there was no longer a Star Utsav. Utsav Utsav will be too tautological for a channel name. And then we get to late April 2021. It's being described as the end of an era. Disney is shutting 18 television channels in Southeast Asia and Hong Kong from October. Disney announced that it was shutting down 18 brands on the 1st of October. And I use the term brands with precision because the exact number of actual channels is actually higher than you think it is because it disregards, say, the Hong Kong or Philippine feeds of a certain branded network. Weeks later it was revealed that it was part of a Disney master plan to cut the number of linear channels throughout 2021. 100 worldwide. And the Asian collapse of October would be like one third of the network. Or maybe half of it. You see, there are still parts of Asia that don't have decent internet as of now, even in countries that aren't overtly authoritarian such as the Philippines with its widespread pickle over the PLDT's meagre internet coverage. Operators in the region are currently scrambling to get new, cheaper local offers instead of Disney's top-tier entertainment, as Disney, always known for being elitist over its content, will likely think that streaming is the future of everything. Looking back at the initial five channels, the sports channel Fox Sports became a three-headed Hydra and is about to close down and for a while, it left a number of sporting events like the Formula One or the Tennis Grand Slams homeless in their catchment areas. Its outdated Chinese feed Star Sports, instead of two channels, is also getting the boot. It's hard to believe that Fox Sports 2 is the Formula ESPN. And now, at the time of recording, they're planning to give Formula One rights to individual companies by region. And the Grand Slams are being handed over to a Korean company that's starting to invest in the Southeast Asian market. The Taiwanese Fox Sports channels actually went off there at the very end of 2020, with a test card being assembled. Channel V, Star's MTV equivalent, continued airing music videos for a long time which is more than can be said for MTV, before they lost about 90% of their potential viewing audience through no thought of their own, and were limited to parts of the Arab world as of the time of closing. A couple of years before shutting down, it became a zombie channel, simply airing music videos back to back without any user engagement of any sort, simply waiting for its own demise. BBC World News gained a separate life, Sky News and Fox News created under separate owners, Disney doesn't have the revenue or the need to set up an Asian ABC News, not that they want to confuse themselves with the Australian ABC. The Star Chinese channel and its sister service Star Chinese Movies are the only two channels to still operate for some magical reason. The only Mandarin service that's getting the boot is SCM Legend, basically in SCM Classics. The two other channels that will survive are National Geographic and Nature Wild. Star World, or in some regions Fox Live, is shutting down, alongside his channels FX, Fox Crime, Fox, Fox Vanilla, Fox Chocolate, Fox Hot Jones, and Fox Hot Pooey. Some of these I just made up. Star Movies, or Fox Movies, is also shutting down, forcing the pay TV portfolio 
to stick with the HBO monopoly in the region. It too eventually became Hydra. Its main channel was joined by two further services, Fox Action Movies and Fox Family Movies, also on Death Row. Worst of all, especially for millions of children out there in Southeast Asia, Disney Channel and Disney Junior are getting the boot too. Just like their entertainment and sports channels. The illogical solution was to do a Thanos snap and rebrand the Star Sports channels to ESPN. The remaining Fox channels to Star, and so on, just like they did in Latin America. Then again, and again, less than a year after the Fox channels became star there, the gods became visible on screen. Feeds merged and operators like DirecTV were forced to drop the star premium channels that were still up, in favour of a crap package of services from NBC Universal, including a subscription reality channel. No, this isn't a joke. I condemn this just as much as I condemned how they came up with reality streaming service Hey You. You don't need to pay to watch reality shows. Nearly bereft operators across the more developed ASEAN economies had to try and fill in the gaps, with Signal in the Philippines unleashing a raft of new, cheap channels that nobody even wants in the first place. Astro managed to do the same thing, creating new in-house channels and signing on-demand deals with the BBC to make up for the loss. Even some content falling under the Disney catalogue ended up bearing on Astro's new channels, Prime Time and Showcase movies. I suspect the searchlights are meant to be a deliberate homage to Fox movies. As September arrived, the nearness of the Reaper dawned on many of these stations. Despite announcing premieres in September, some of their channels were already making their farewell promos. The other Fox branded channels, Fox, Fox Life, Fox Crime and FX, also did their own, this time, minute long farewell videos reflecting each channel's individual personality. Fox Movies said that movies are forever, that they are going to be cherished and all that. Movies are forever. Thank you from Fox Movies. While Disney Channel pulled out old stops and gave us a 90 second blaze of remembrance involving Disney central properties with Singaporean actors despite the fact that the Singaporeans are unable to pick it up since last year. It's also running on Disney Junior, but with its logo instead. In Asia, Disney Channel will, for now, continue in India and Japan. Taiwan will bid farewell when this year is over. Streaming can be viewed as a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe it's our generation that's becoming lazier and impatient. Especially the latter, because... The more people are addicted to streaming media, the less patience they have. And when we talk about streaming services, we're talking about paying for patients or services. I mean, sooner or later, the whole notion of waiting for a given time of day to see a show come on air will likely be obsolete, at least in the more developed countries. But linear TV will still hold on for a little while, at least in my point of view. It all depends on who you ask. For Disney, as Sky used to say, there's no turning back. We came here to celebrate the past of many twists and turns, ambitions, failures, and mergers. As started themselves used to describe themselves. A rival choice from 20 different channels in sports, music, movies, and entertainment. Programming in eight languages targeted in 350 million viewers, from India to Taiwan, Japan to Indonesia. When it comes to satellite television in Asia, Star TV and its partners lead the way with the most powerful television brands. Brands so powerful that they have since disappeared, like the condemned facing their own demise and seeing their birthplace die. Thank you for the years, and farewell to Linear TV. Unless the unthinkable happens at the last minute, but since it's unthinkable, it probably won't. And now... I'll let Christopher Robbie have the final word. We said at the start we'd come to celebrate, and I think we had. We've enjoyed remembering, 
and I'm sure you won't forget. So, with a final farewell smile from those stunned people who've become, for many of you, true friends, it's goodbye from us.